慢慢慢，来来来来来来来，慢慢慢慢慢，给卡特，马克斯卡特 reporting。What's up? What's up? What's up? Marcus Conti reporting on this sixteenth、um, <clears throat> of February, two thousand twenty, week fourteen of the Gilets Jaunes. The Gilets Jaunes. Yellow vests. Yellow vests <clears throat> on fire in in France, getting their heads beat. Fucking cops squirting them down with fire hoses.、Right? Still going on, right? So. We're in week fourteen of the Act fourteen of the Gilets Jaunes. I want to talk、uh, a little bit about that. There's not much going on. I was just watching RT, and、uh, it doesn't seem like there's any real、uh, difference. They're holding their ground. They're 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 still coming out in numbers. They're fighting oligarchy. They 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 understand, for the most part, what the problem is. So, but I want to talk about the problem, right? Let's talk about the problem. Because it's only in France, right? It's only Europe, right?、It's、dealing with this、um, this、uh, banking crises, debt crises that they don't talk about in America, right? So I found this article. I'm going to read. I'll, I'll read a little. Let me read a couple of statistics first, and I'm going to revisit this、uh, this this chart that I、uh, made up a while ago. I was just doing some like crunching some numbers. That <clears throat> so the what is the total what is the total net worth of All of America, right?、C、combined net worth of all the Americans, right? It turns out that it's ninety-five trillion dollars, right? So everybody's net worth—that's minus debt—it <clears throat> adds up to five trillion, ninety-five、uh, trillion dollars. And when you divide that by three hundred and twenty-five million people, if you did it evenly, it would come out to about seven hundred thousand dollar net worth, net worth per person. But that's inaccurate. Why? Because one percent of the population, right,、uh, ha has thirty-eight point six percent of the net worth, right? So, one percent controls about eleven point eight billion, eleven point eight million dollars each, and the bottom fifty percent, right, of the country, a hundred and sixty-two million people, have one percent of the wealth. Right? An average of sixty five hundred dollars. The the income and wealth inequality in this country is staggering, but what's causing it? What's causing it? Everybody wants to point the finger. It's the it's the the kooks, the deep state. It's the immigrants. You got to build a wall. It's a fucking you know. It's 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 everything but the problem, right? It's everything but the problem. Hey,、right, let's build a wall. We'll keep the immigrants out. Oh, let's lock Hillary Clinton up. That's a good idea. We'll lock up Hillary Clinton just for something. Anything, it doesn't matter. We'll 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 we'll、uh, go to the FBI and we'll fire everybody. <laughs> that that's gonna, right? But the real problem is every, again, as I, I sound like a broken record, I know it's the fucking banking, it's the banking industry, right? So let's just look at this chart. Remember this chart I had? Remember this fucking fine chart I came up with, right? I'll do it again, right? So there it is. There's the people down on the bottom, the ninety nine percent, and and in between them. And and the banks is the judicial, the legislative, and the the executive branches of power. So、right? Congress and Senate and the president, with below them was is the deep state, the FBI, CIA. But above them, where the where the、uh, where the Constitution used to be, are the six large banks: Wells Fargo. You've got、uh, who else up there? J.P. Morgan Chase. Let me just give you some focus here. You've got、uh, Wells Fargo, Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan Chase, Citi,、uh, Bank of America, right? All the, all the, all the, all the,、uh, all the banks, right? And below them, kind of connected to them, is the ten thousand publicly traded companies, right? It's like, it's like right up in, right up in here. Ten companies. Above them is the banks. There's, the, there's House and Senate. And up here is the Fed Reserve, right, and and the elitist corporations that donate from abroad, right? That used to be. So the other thing about about the Fed Reserve, everybody says you got to get rid of the Fed Reserve. Now the Fed Reserve is is intuitively it's not really an independent bank on its own, as people might think. They they do enforce the、um, the the regulatory 
uh, interest rates and such uh, to the banks. They regulate the banks. But really, you got to realize that the banks are running the show. The banks can sink an economy. The banks have full reign. They just, all the Federal Reserve does is print money for them. Right, the, the 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 companies will it's quantitative easing, right? They or or the they drop the interest rate down to zero, right? So that that it's free money for the banks, right? Imagine, could you imagine if people got free money, right? If you can, you get a credit card and there's no interest, right? You could pay it back in twenty five years and it's the same, right? And and most of the time, like in the banking industry, the the the, the Fed Reserve doesn't even bang the door down to get the money back from the banks. Right, so they have this system of of free money, free leverage. They leverage everything that they get. They leverage it ninety to one, you know, ninety percent. They keep ten percent. They dump ninety percent back into the markets, right? And it's all it's fake. It's a Ponzi scheme. It's it's, you know, it's it's um, these these systems don't work. It's a fiat currency, whatever. It's fucking it's complicated, but it doesn't it doesn't uh, work. Uh, so let me, I want to read, I, f I stumbled on an article. Usually Wall Street, the people on Wall Street usually cover each other's trails, right? But here's Barron's, a very reputable, or at least it was when I used to follow the markets daily. Barron's was pretty, pretty interesting uh, uh, as a read. And traders and, you know, Wall Street people would go there f to see what does Barron say on Saturday, right? So today is... They put this one out last night at 5 p.m., right after the close. Right, listen to what they say. Federal Reserve seems oblivious to a coming crisis. Right, now, again, quantitative easing, right? Qu quantitative easing is when, when the banks, like when the, when the market crashed. You have to understand what it is. When the banks crashed, right, and froze, right, because they wouldn't trade with each other, right, because they all had this crap, this federal, this... Uh, Credit default swap shit. It was crap. It was it was fake. There was securities piled on top of a, a failing real estate market. And when the real estate market crashed, they were leveraged forty to one and they went to zero. Right. And AIG Goldman Sachs orchestrated the whole thing and ultimately Goldman Sachs demanded their money in full from AIG, from Lehman Brothers. They sunk Lehman Brothers. They demanded it from JP Morgan Chase. They demanded it from Citi. And a lot of other banks, right? So, so Goldman Sachs was the orchestrator of that crisis. And by the way, Goldman Sachs is back in the is now your treasure is secretary of the uh, treasury, F F not Steve Mnuchin. Right? So they're, they're back in they're back in the driver's seat, and it's going to happen again, right? So here's here's um here's, uh, I'm sorry I'm sorry I digressed, but here's Barron's um, laying out the foundation. The Federal Reserve recently suggested. <clears throat> that it was finished raising interest rates for now and might even stop uh, shrinking its post-financial crisis balance sheets sooner than expected. Even so, in delivering numerous upbeat assessments of the U.S. economy, Fed Chairman uh, Jeremy, Jeremy Powell is continuing the regrettable tradition set by his precedenters, his predecessor, <laughs> predecessors, Alan Greenspan and Ben Bernanke, that of, uh, of blatant detachment from the real economy. So he's, they're saying that Jerome, Jerome Powell, the now uh, Fed chair, uh, is doing exactly what Alan Greenspan and Bernanke, Alan Greenspan on the Bush and Bernanke and, and way back to Clinton and Reagan, and then Bernanke under Obama is doing the same exact thing, right? Blatant detachment from the real economy. It's on fire. The economy's on fire. They're playing politics. Right? <clears throat> this isn't merely aloofness, but deliberate disregard of increasing, increasingly clear signals that point to a looming recession, including a dramatic slowdown in housing, stagnating car sales, declined retail sales, and economic weakness in China and Europe, accompanied by the dismissal of those who warn of an imminent crisis. So people have blown the whistle left, right, and center that that the the economy is it's a bubble, right? Although the stock market, yeah, it's recovering, yeah, but why? Because it's it's that's that's rigged, right? That's 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 rigged. Right? That'll eventually flop as well. <clears throat> when we read through the transcripts of Fed deliberations on the eve of mega crises such as twenty 
2000 000 with Greenspan and then 2008 with Bernanke and follow Powell's statements of the past year, it is hard to believe the Fed's inability to read the state of the economy or understand its decision-making process. Only when reality struck in the past, when the ship smashed into the iceberg, was there a willingness to admit analytical flaws, recognize errors of judgment, and craft a recalibration of policy. Right, so, so this guy in Barron's is, is, is saying that Wall Street sees it but the Fed, the Fed is not responding to it. So the Fed is, was on target to jack the interest rate up to 3.5, and, and they're not. What they're doing instead is they're making quantitative easing, which, which it, hey, Google, what is quantitative easing? According to Wikipedia, quantitative easing, also known as large-scale asset purchases, is an expansionary monetary policy whereby a central bank buys predetermined amounts of government bonds or other financial assets in order to stimulate the economy and increase liquidity. Right, that's the Ministry of Truth, so that's not actually accurate. <laughs> that's the one, that's the meaning of the word that they want you to believe. But what, what, it, what they're saying is that it's true and that the central bank, the Fed, Federal, federal Reserve, is actually a bank. It's a federal bank, right? They buy, they buy corporate bonds. Right? It's not government bonds. They go into the fucking banks and they say, sell us some shit, crap, and we'll give you cash, right? And then the bonds go one way and the, the electronic cash goes the other way. And the bonds sit there because they're usually, for at least the last eight years, were on zero interest, right? So they don't, they, it's, and they don't pay it back. That's the other thing. That's where the, the deficit, the debt, it just, it just rises and rises. They get free money. They play with it. They burn it. They give each other bonuses. They, and and it, it's just a fucking, it's a Ponzi scheme, right? It's a Ponzi scheme. It's one where people stop, you know, can, whatever. But that's, that's what's, um, what's going on, right? That's what a quantitative easing is, right? It's, it's that in conjunction with lowering the interest rates to give them the free money, right? When they're in a jam, give us some free money and we'll, we'll do, I mean, it's, it, you guys talk about socialism. We, we're not a socialist. We'll never be a socialist country. This is the definition of socialism where, where, where everything is, it's government giving is, is breastfeeding the banks. Do you understand that the banks are, are on life support? by they on their own record they, on their own accord they couldn't survive right without this constant influx of free money right that they don't pay back right that's where the, that's how it, but when you but but if you're in debt they'll take your house they'll take your car they'll take your passport they'll take your driver's license right that's that's the 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 hard reality of individual people right it, that's it's capitalism for people but for the banks it's it's a a governmental socialist old fashioned i mean i hate to use the word but that's what it is right that's what it is and um you know and it's unavoidable at this point because the quantitative easing is now becoming a fact of life like they don't have anything else right there is no a, there, you know a service economy like the united states doesn't make anything. There's not enough manufacturing to sustain the numbers. All we have is 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 bullshit jobs where you know agencies and lawyers and service providers and insurances and all this bullshit, right? It, that just it's life support, right? It's not a a an economy that actually makes something like in China where they actually make things and and produce and and right we don't have that all we have is this this fictitious surface you know service economy i know i'm rambling a little bit but it's there's a lot there's a lot there that uh, try to grab a little bit of it powell uh pro proclaimed just a few months ago that the current u.s business cycle could go could go on indefinitely right, so there's the chair the fed chair lying basically right they don't they don't even know right that's the point right so you, that's another point right? that people think that the Fed Reserve is so smart and so powerful, right? And that the that the Congress, right? It's connected to Congress in, in many respects, the Fed Bank, right? It's connected to government. It's a government handout, right? When they give out this money, right? That's what it is. Right? And 
And people think, oh, they're so smart, they're so intelligent, they're, they're so market savvy, but they're not. And, and oh, they're running the show. You see how they're, they give the money to the banks when, when they think it's, no, they, they respond to what the banks tell them to do. Now, us, that's why I keep saying the banking, the banks are the bad guys. Those are the bad guys running the show. Because if they don't get their way, they, they smash the market. They smash the, the stock market. They freeze assets. They, they make fucking hell, right? They, they create hell on earth, right? Those are the guys you got to lock up, right? You want to lock somebody up, lock those guys up, right? right? The billionaires, the 400, 500 billionaires that control so much wealth, like 40%, whatever the fucking, it's hard to find the numbers, the real numbers of how much money they have. But if you tax the corporations and if you tax the banking and deflate them, and when they fail to give up the money, you lock them up. And when they, when they break antitrust laws, you lock them up. You'll find out who the billionaires are because they'll come crying. Oh, fucking, you took, me, you took my eight fucking, two, two fucking $500 billion. You took my money. Right? You'll hear them come out. Right? But most of America is struggling making $6,000, uh, $6, has a, a net worth of $6,000. That's like, that's like the clothes you're wearing in a car. Right? That's it. Right? No money in the bank. Right? A couple of bucks in the bank. Right? And these guys got billions of dollars, right? So... I mean, I'm I, I'm being a doomsday guy, right? But that's that's the reality of it right now, you know. So uh, I'll just read a little more. I'm going on. In U.S., um, corporate profit growth is decelerating, and stock buybacks, once a major source of stock market support, uh, appears to be diminishing as funding becomes more expensive or disappears. Right. Keep an eye on falling bank shares. Those in Europe, Japan, and China are sending clear signals of trouble. U.S. bank stocks can't be far behind. A blow to the global real estate market, coupled with a severe recession, conceivably could cause irreputable damage to the global banking system. This is, this is not me talking. This is, this is Barron's. This is the one that they all look at. Global socio-political unrest is rampant. The only effective measure to stab off a crisis is budgetary and fiscal expansion on a dramatic scale, right? But we don't have any way to do that, right? Because every time the, the corporations get money, they, they dump it off seas. Rather than hire people, they, they shut those branches down. They shut down the American manufacturing and they go hunt for something cheaper and they, they spend their money uh, abroad where they don't have to pay any tax at all. Like legally, don't have to pay any tax. They don't even have to hide it. Right? See, it's a bad. We have a really, really bad system, and it's it's inevitably going to pop. And what you're seeing in in France is 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 the boiling point, right? Where France's interest rates are zero. Their central banks are already at zero. They can't. They can go below zero and actually pay you to take money. <laughs> Imagine that. Imagine they did that. Why not quantitative ease the people? Give me fucking a thousand dollars. Give me eleven hundred dollars, and I only owe a thousand, and with no interest, I'll take it. Right? That's the kind of deals the banks get. Right? But but the regular people don't get that. You're on your own, man. Right? So this will this will be achieved as central banks fund the monetary monetization of ballooning government debts. See that's what they do too. They 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 find debt and then they they the the banks funnel money into that debt and try to leverage the debt against them, right? It's it's just a it's a failing failing process. And I'm not going to I'm not going to sum up sum it up. I'm going to let Barron sum it up, right? But making government the solution to all economic crises is a dangerous step that would not merely threaten asset prices but also hasten capitalism's unfortunate end. Right? That is, that's Barron's, the, the, the Bible of, of Wall Street, saying capitalism's unfortunate end because it exhausted itself. It's, it has, it's topped out. It's monopolized. And there's no way to stimulate it from the top down. You stimulate an economy through the bottom up. Right? That's the way it happens. If you give people money they, and they have money and they have time, they start to think about new, new small businesses, innovation from the bottom up. 
But uh, but people are too stubborn. People are like, no, it's fucking socialism. No, no, I want to work for every penny. I want to go to work. I'll work 50, 70, 100 hours a week. And, and, and I want to work. I want to earn my money, right? You, you missed the big point, right? I know so, I, it sounds like it sounds like something it sounds like something foreign but what the things that the the, the regular people citizenry needs is exactly what the corporations get and it has to be a reverse right that's that's the whole point of it where it's not that you want to make it a a a government handout to the people what you want to do is you want to create a, a competitive capitalist, you know, situation where there's competition. There is social democracy, right? Where we have jobs programs, we have health care, we have education, we have police, we have fire, we have infrastructure plans, we have ways to fund the the populace. You know, where I go, I walk in a park. The park is like a shithole because because there's no money to make it not a shithole anymore, right? Things break down, and that where do you get the money? This is where you get the money. Uh, so so just to sum it up, quantitative easing. I know I rambled, but whatever, man. It's fucking Saturday. What are you going to do? <laughs> so quantitative easing is now a... It, it appears that the Fed is is gearing towards... Re again, dropping down the interest rate so everything inflates artificially, right? Free money flowing, 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 right? People will go, when that happens, people go further into debt, right? It's it's like, you know, it's just, it's just, it's a, just a matter of time before it explodes again, right? The debt bubble, right? It locks enough, right? And how does it tie into, you know, what you, you tuned in to listen to Yellow Vest? This is what's going on, right? This is the essence, the target for, for people fighting the Yellow Vest movement. It's not Hillary Clinton. It's not James Comey and Andrew McCabe. These are incidental, very, very low-level players in, a, in a, mass, a mass scheme to rip you off, right? And the politicians are paid off. Right? They they work in 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 uh, in lockstep with this with this this federal bank, right? That should probably be abolished. I know people like to say that uh, abolish the, the Fed. Yeah, well, you you should of course, right? But then if you do that, you guarantee that the banks fail because they're not they're on life support. Understand that the banks are on life support. They get free money. And give it out at, at uh, nine points to the you know they they make nine points on the dollar, I mean it's just it's just an outrageous, a, an outrageously rigged system. When you talk about a rigged economy, that's the definition of it, right? Quantitative easing is 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 not. It was used as an emergency, in you know in the, the first Great Depression. Now it's 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 like fuck it. We're just gonna print money. What? We pay it back. What well, pay back? Just print. They print money. They take the fake bonds. They put the fake bonds in the closet, right? And and they 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 the banks got their money and they spent. It's like a it's like the mob, you know. So uh, Marcus Conti reporting on this uh, Saturday.